Um, on this, on the point of the discussion we were just having, though, about um, automation and what happens when robots are doing most of the work, you know, I, I bring a lens. Um, I can't help but bring my divinity school background to this, where most of my colleagues from that are, you know, theologians or they're clergy of some sort, faith leaders. Uh, and I just think the, the crisis of human meaning that is coming is really, it's slippery, it's hard for us to get our hands around it. Uh, but that's going to be a critical thing for leaders, um, for politicians, for people who are trying to govern, to figure out how to message that and how to help people navigate uh, that dimension of things. I was just telling, I was just mentioning earlier that at, at Institute for the Future we have uh, we're a pretty distributed bunch of people, and we have telepresence robots in our office, which are, you know, zooming around. It looks kind of like a Roomba vacuum cleaner with, like, a music stand and a head on it. You know, those were the early, early prototypes. And now they're quite advanced. We use one that's made by suitable technologies. We, we started with one. Now we have three, and we have a staff of 45 people. Some days when everyone's traveling, there are only a few people, you know, five people in the office. So picture now you're a human in the flesh person and just interacting with a robot that, granted, it's inhabited by one of your colleagues who has some agency over it and is driving it around, but you're in a meeting and the other three people are represented in a robot format. You can start to experience the kind of jarring, um, you know, you're not even being replaced by a robot, you're just being augmented in that case. And it's, it can be quite jarring. So I think... I, what I would advise anyone in this room to do is to, anytime you have an opportunity to expose yourself to that early, um, you can sort of inoculate yourself to the shock uh, of, of how that will challenge our very human experience. Yeah, I just want to, I think, expand on this point about meaning, which I think is really important. And there's a few different angles here that, that you could take this discussion. One of the angles is that um, over the last 100 years or so since, uh, maybe 150, our sense of meaning and identity has become tied to, to a concept of work and, an, and a workplace identity, <clears throat> which was not there previous to that. It was more community-based and more diffused. Not necessarily more liberating for many people around the world at all, so it's not like we should look back and say, oh, it was all great when we were all kind of tied to the parish structures and that was the way that life should be lived. Um, or tribal structures, but, but to say that, well, if we are entering a world where work is becoming more, more fluid, where um, the efficiencies of the, the digital revolution are allowing us to build new structures in this way, we do have to really think carefully about sources of meaning and new ways of, of coming and working together. Um, and interestingly, to Rachel's point about um, Divinity School, um, where this really hit me was actually um, a piece of work that we did on, on countering violent extremism where the point about uh, recruitment uh, was uh, for, for violent extremists is a lot about providing meaning. It's a lot about saying, here's a community, here's a higher sense of purpose, here's some agency, something that you can actually do to move towards this end goal, and here's an identity for you in that structure which makes you feel safe and secure. And I guess one of the big concerns in a technologically driven future where we may have seven or eight employers every day or every week um, because things are so efficient there's a question there about, you know, how do I construct with my community uh, a sense of security? And, and how do we make sure that those, the, the role of the state is reforming and resolving some of the, um, those elements of resilience and security that are lost when all of us become individually more efficient, um, but collectively still need to support one another with all the public goods and, uh, and those aspects around us as well. So I think that this, when we talk about technology, the values of technology, the biases of technology, writ large across entire systems is just a critically important discussion to have. And yet at the moment we tend to geek out on how cool you know, that particular capability is. So how do we get it, how do we move it, how do we stay geeks in my case, but become uh, like more, more attuned to what does this mean in other different contexts? And, and, and that, that I think is a huge challenge for all of us.